you'd have to think, and we said this before the Wisconsin game, and, and I was disappointed, and I think uh, I'm, I'm sure the coaching staff was was down on themselves for, for not trying more um, just to break tendency in that Wisconsin game. That was the biggest game of the season. Now, they escaped with – they found a way to get to this game regardless, although if they had won that game and then won out, we would be take, we'd be talking about playoff right now. We'd be talking about win this game. You are in the playoff. That's right. beside the point. I still think Iowa actually has a slim chance for the playoff. It's not great, but that's beside the point. This game, you'd think that this is this is the big game. I mean, this is you could argue you could make the argument, Don, and I'm not saying it's true or not, but you could make the argument that this is Kirk's biggest game of his career. I think 15 probably was because you win that game and you're in the playoff. Um, and then you might say the Rose Bowl in 15 was his next biggest game. You could make the argument this is the biggest game of Kirk's career. So you'd have to think they're going to leave everything out there as far as play calling and whatnot. Has Iowa been holding on to anything? I know we've talked about special teams trick plays that Iowa ran a lot in 17 and 18, very successful, exotics offensively. Are there things we haven't seen that you expect Kirk Ferentz, Brian Ferentz, this offensive coaching staff to deploy Saturday night? I have no doubt that we have some plays that we haven't shown uh, that are at least going to be on that call sheet on Saturday night. Uh, The question is whether or not we get to them. I I think we might, and I'll tell you why. Uh, we have nothing to lose. You know, there's that term, uh, playing with house money. In many ways, we are playing with house money. You know, we've already overachieved in some people's eyes. We weren't supposed to even be in this game two weeks ago, and now we are. Um, so if anybody has any extra pressure, it's Michigan because they're, they're playing for the right to be in the Final Four. Uh, we, don't have the, we don't have that burden to carry around. Uh, and they played a very emotional uh, game just a week ago, and it's – it's going to be interesting to see if they can match that same emotional energy they had last Saturday with this Saturday. I, I said it to Mark Rogers yesterday, and people, a lot of people called me a fool. People were saying I was delusional. Don, you know I'm a homer, but I'm also, I try to be pretty balanced. I, would you agree with that? I try to stay down the middle and call it like I see it. Right. But I have a really good feeling about this game. I think I was going to win this game. And no one else, like no one else, is predicting that. Um, and, and what I have heard is people saying, "Man, I just don't see any way Iowa wins this game." Don, in a way, that's exactly what Kirk Ferentz and this coaching staff wants. I would have to think people saying, "I don't see any way for them to do," it, completely discounting them. I just have a feeling they win this game. Don, care to offer any predictions? I know you're not a score predicting savant but any predictions for saturday do you feel anything close to what i'm ex- expressing here uh yeah it wouldn't surprise me at all if we pull it off uh, just like i made the comment to you a, a week ago i said it wouldn't surprise me at all if minnesota beats wisconsin because wisconsin's got the pressure uh, you know the pressure's off for minnesota they're not going they're not going anywhere they're not going to indy but they still have a chance to play for the axe and um and last saturday was a Huge win for Michigan. You know, they used up a lot of bullets last weekend. Um, Can they have a similar effort this Saturday night to what they had last Saturday? One one difference would simply be they don't have the home field advantage. You know, half the crowd's for them and half the crowd's for us, I would think, or thereabouts. It's at least not on a home field. So, um, um, and and they feel the pressure, of course, of needing to win the game to make the playoffs. They, They finally made it to Indy. But let's face it, how many chances do you get if you're playing game 13 and all you have to do is win the game to be in the playoffs? That's a lot of pressure. And um, we'll see if they're ready for it. But I know this, we, we relish the role of underdog. Um, and and here, here's really what it boils down to. One of the things I was saying to all the guys I saw today, simple advice, keep finding ways to win. You know, you don't have to have more yards. You don't have to have um, more long passes. Um, you don't have to dominate statistically, but you do need to find ways to win. And sometimes that's the beauty of the game. Sometimes the team that you would think deserves to win based on the the stats, they simply don't win. There are all kinds of examples of that. Uh, I deal with them all the time You look, looking at analytics. So uh, the really good teams, you've heard me talk about it, you're a positive exception or a negative exception. Well, if you, if you win on turnovers, lost the game, you're a negative exception. Um, on the other hand, if you lost on turnovers and found a way to win the game, good for you because you defied the odds. You'll find this interesting. This says so much about our team. And I, I shared this with Kirk. I said, Kirk, one week ago, there were three 
parameter combinations that were still 100% win. I'm talking about on the whole season. You're talking 30-something and zero, you know, unbeaten. There were three parameters left out of 105 combinations. Imagine all those 15 parameters, figuring up all the combinations involving those 15 parameters. There's 105 of them. And I've been charting all these the entire season. And after last week's games, there were still three that were 100%. Okay, I should say before we played Nebraska, there were three that were still 100%. Now there are none. You know why there are none? Because we uh, defied the odds and beat Nebraska, even though they won those parameter combinations. Think about that. Three of them. Uh, Incidentally, Nebraska won eight parameters. We won six. So what you're telling me, Don, is if any team in the Big Ten is going to overcome every odd – It's going to be Iowa. I think so. Simple reason, it's hard to measure character. We have great character. I'm not going to – I don't doubt for a second that Michigan has a lot of great character on their team too, but I would still give us the edge on character because our coaches place a huge priority on character. Those, If you're going to beat Iowa, you're going to have to kill them to do it. That's how how seriously we take our game. Because I really don't know that there is a position that they dominate in. Um, I think there are a couple – battles they could win but there's just something about this game we've talked about the hangover effect that Michigan could possibly be hung over from the Ohio State win I think that's possible um, certainly you have to wonder about um, you know how much is Kirk using the disrespect card I mean is he a guy Don I know he's not necessarily a Hayden Fry as far as being a motivator but is Kirk a guy who you know that he will put stuff up on the whiteboard or you know, we'll use that type of, of uh, motivation where, hey, we're 10 and a half point underdogs. They're disrespecting us. Let's go out and kill somebody, figuratively speaking, of course. Well, I do think this. Um, it's safe to say that was a that was a monumental effort out of Michigan last Saturday. You got to realize a huge level of frustration. How many years in a row had they lost to Ohio State? I'm not sure. It's about a 10. decade, right? Yeah, about 10. About 10 years, plus or minus, but who's counting? I'm pretty sure um, Michigan fans are counting. That's for sure. They were counting. So they finally got the win. It was a very emotional win for them. Um, And, of course, it got them into the Big Ten championship game. So they used up a lot of emotional bullets last weekend. That's safe to say. Um, So it's going to be hard for them to duplicate that. You know, we're the the, uh, opponent that's not given much respect. Um, That's always played well for us. You know, the no respect thing's always played well for us. Uh, there are any number of times when we played Michigan through the years where we were a decided underdog and they were looking down their nose at us and it cost them. Um, the first one that comes to mind for me is back in 1981. We went up there with a team, of course, that had not done anything uh, prior to that season, and we beat them 9-7 to seven on the strength of three field goals. Uh, and, of course, some great defense. Uh, I mentioned again to, to Kirk today, I said, this team reminds me so much of that 81 team, and he said – he said, yeah, me too. And uh, he, he said, maybe what was most significant when Andre Tibbett was in town for that Minnesota game, he had a chance to talk to the team. And he mentioned that very fact. You guys remind me so much of our team back in 81. And we had a stingy defense. We had a kicking game that was second to none. And we had an offense that was opportunistic and you had to protect the ball. And, and the offense wasn't going to win any stats back in 81 either, but we knew how to win games. Frankly, it's more important to know how to win games than it is to to win statistical wars. Right. Only one step matters, of course, and that's the uh, points at the end of the game. So our guys recognize we don't have to outrush Michigan to beat them. We don't even have to win the majority of the analytics to beat them um, because we've, we've beaten teams without winning half the analytics anyway. Uh, 